What's up, YouTube? I'm at Pellissippi State Community College. This is my view for the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? By the way, this is one of my favorite schools. You know, I went here in uh, January to December of 2011. Summer school was lit too. Not because I had to go, because I wanted to go. I literally had one year left of school. One year left. But I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm moving to Houston, Texas sometime in October. So I'm not going to be able to go to school here. But maybe I will, maybe I won't. Who knows in the future what it holds. But yeah, man, Pellissippi State Community College is forever going to be my school. I love Pellissippi State Community College. Pellissippi State Community College has the best teachers, have the best courses. Um, they, they gave her a, like a lot of gifts, like free t-shirts, always had free food. You know, it was just a great place to meet and just enjoy yourself. And you learn a lot too from so many different people and cultures. And I remember they had culture day. Like it was just a great school and it's still a great school, man. Like I want to one day, like when I'm famous, be a sponsor for the school, like help donate to the school and you know, fix stuff at the school. Like Pellissippi State, this school, if it wasn't for this school, I wouldn't be a motivational speaker. This school helped develop me to be a motivational speaker. Helped me even more become even more of a people person. I was already a people person, but even more of a people person. Just just sustaining so many ideas and executing those ideas and just having more confidence in myself. And it's just a great school, dude. I love Pellissippi State Community College, man. So, but this is the overall view. Let me show you guys what it's looking like. Real beautiful. Real serene. Over there to the uh, to the right, where I'm pointing right now, there used to be a stage, and then that's where they used to have the hot air balloons. So it's real nice. But Pellissippi is a good school, man. And for anyone that's like working towards their goals or working towards their dreams, never give up on your goals, never give up on your dreams, because life is so short. And I'll be the first one to tell you that today, like. I just felt real drained, man. Like, I've been feeling drained for the longest time. <laughs> for real. You have no idea. And the sun, the thing with me is like, like, the thing is, like, when you when you have a lot of ideas and a lot of, um, I'm going to say drive, motivation, those two most important things to start your fire of success but you have no way to really execute that plan, not because you're ignorant and not because you don't know anything, it's just because you're really trying to make steps out of nothing because you need the proper stones or the proper glue or whatever the situation is uh, to get to where you need to get. But to make a long story short, I'm gonna put this hand to get a little tired on me. It's, it's, it's difficult to be motivated at times when you're literally just motivating yourself and you have nobody else to motivate you. So my, my words of wisdom today is to always keep yourself grounded with morals and to always remember what you started and why you started it. And I had to refresh myself and refresh my memory to understand why I do what I do. And the most important thing is just to have yourself centered and never ever lose your balance. Sometimes we do lose our balance, but when we do lose our balance, we got to get back right on top of our, our original course. <laughs> it's okay to stray away from your, you know, your path. Just don't be too far from it, because then you'll really be lost. But we live and we learn every second of the day. God is always going to make sure we're taken care of. And most importantly, man, just, just always keep yourself motivated. <laughs> I had a I had to look at something today on uh, on YouTube. There's a lot of times I look at YouTube. I look at YouTube a lot. I love YouTube. <laughs> and it was a video about moving to LA. It was um, not $700. It was another guy with with, uh, with nothing, basically like 500 bucks. And I seen this video before. And I don't want to move to LA. I used to want to move to LA. LA's too expensive, so I'm moving to Houston, which is not too far from LA. But it was just you're gonna do something in life, just do it. You know, I know it's easier said than done because it's like, you can't just up and move with no money. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. I mean, you could, but you won't go far, but you gotta have a plan. And I've been I've been executing a plan about moving to Houston, uh, honestly, for the past six months. But moving out of Tennessee in general, man, since I was like a, a baby. <laughs> Let's go as far as that. Like, I lived in New York. New York is awesome. I love New York. 
but New York's too expensive. That's the only draw. Places like LA and New York, I would never move to unless I have some serious money or a really, really, really good job. Really good entrepreneurship, you know. Just all that good stuff. All, all my businesses, passive income, stuff like that. But, oh, you gotta see this view. Look at this view. This view is beautiful. I like that lighting too. Look at that view. I will zoom in, but I'm on my iPhone 6S, and you can do that, but I don't wanna zoom in. But overall, guys, this lighting is really good. <laughs> I just, I don't look without glasses. I don't look good. But um, yeah, man, um, I had to look at that video just to re inspire me, re motivate me because I was thinking to myself for the longest time. Like, I have a song called I'm My Own Best Friend. I made that in 2010 of either September or October. And then I basically made like I'm My Own Best Friend Part 2, but it wasn't like Part 2, but it sounded like it recently recorded. And it's like, I don't have anybody that checks on me. I don't really have a lot of, I, I interact with more people on social media than I do in real life. That says a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That says a lot, bro. But even on social media, I don't really have nobody checking up on me. Real life, I don't have a lot of people checking on me. And I get that you got to do things with yourself. And that's what life is usually about. But sometimes as a human, we need companionship or we need friendship. And it can get real lonely at times, especially in this cold world. And I know that. <laughs> we all know that. Just, just keep going, man. Like, that's the only thing I can really say. I do music because music is... I mean, I want to make a career out of it because I make spiritual music. It's conscious music, but it's more spiritual than conscious. You know, always believe in God. Always has a message within your music. J. Cole inspires me a lot. I love J. Cole. I would love to meet him one day. Of course, Tupac Amaru Shakur. God bless his soul. New York rappers as well. But just um, anything that you truly have a passion for, you gotta go for it. Because if you have if you have a passion for something, you should do the best you can to live that life. Because you only live once. And if you go in life regretting things, then you'll never fully understand why you didn't do what you do because you too busy think about I should have I should have done this or I could have done that or what if I would have done it this way you know you should not have any regrets I'm 26 I just turned 26 not too long ago you know what I mean almost a month ago and I don't regret anything in life so far there's a few things I could have done different I will say that but for the most part I don't regret anything I feel like where you in where you are in this world in this lifetime is where God wants you to be, where he where He puts you at. Because he's gonna bless you regardless of where you should be or where he think you should be. So when it's not your time, don't even stress on it. Because your time is gonna come when he feels like your time is gonna come. You know, just keep pursuing your dreams, keep pursuing your, your avenues, keep working hard, keep um, giving back to others, keep donating to the community, keep being a philanthropist, keep being a thinker. If you're in school right now, graduate school, graduate high school, graduate from college. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let money stop you. And I'm here to say that because I did let money stop me. <laughs> I dropped out of school. I, I never forget. Well, I was on academic probation in 2011, mainly because of math. I kept failing math several times. And oh, look at the little ducks. I'm gonna turn the camera around again. I love the little duckies. They a little pain in the ass sometimes when you're driving. They be in the middle of the street. <laughs> but um. Yeah, man, like, I'd be the first one to tell you, like, I was on academic probation, I think it was like a month, and it was just for math. It wasn't for any other subjects, but I kept failing math. I failed it twice in college, and then I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I took it for a third time, or I might have just took it two times. I just remember I failed it twice, and then uh, I wasn't able to, like, to keep going in school, like, with long, I mean, I could have kept going to school, but as far as loan wise, they cut me off loan wise because uh, I failed my math. That was and that was the only class I failed. No, I, I will say I, I did fail a reading class, but the teacher, the teacher was um, she wasn't doing her job, and that's not me making excuse like she really wasn't. Uh, I never, I never forget my boy. Uh, what was his name? What was his name? It's been it's seven, eight years ago. He took me out on my he took me out on my 19th birthday. What was his name, dude? 
I forgot his name, dude. His face was in my head. His friend Jared was cool as shit. I forgot his name, dude. I forgot his name. But um, he had the same issue. I mean, we both complained to the dean of the school. I never forget that. And we had, we both actually had a meeting with the teacher with the dean at the school of Pennsylvania. It was crazy. I remember this like it was yesterday. I was I was 18 at the time, and he was 21, I believe, at that time. Yeah, 20 or 21, I, something like that. I, we was real close in age. So yeah, I was 18 at the time. Just this is like, bro, never failed a class or well, that math class, but. I don't even know if I even got that class fixed because I, I ended up getting a D in that class, but a D, well, D's not failing, but in college, some, sometimes a D is failing, but I ended up getting a D in that class, and I really should got a C or a B, but the teachers just, like, just didn't care. That's probably, like, the only bad experience at Pell I had with a teacher, but besides that one teacher, I had several teachers, man, like, were just awesome. My math teacher was cool, but I won't say he was a pain, but he, he just didn't play. Let's just say that. He didn't play. He was a good he was a good math teacher. I give him that. He was a good math teacher, but I just didn't really understand half the stuff. But it was funny when I took math, the same type of math that I struggled with and barely even graduated high school because of that one math class. Like I, it's just like my mom. She said she had a similar story where she was in high school and she barely passed the math class, but her teacher felt bad for her. Was and she felt like her teacher passed her with that grade, even though she deserted. She felt like she had like a little bit of a a heads up. It was like the same thing with me here. Like, I barely passed the math with a D, but found out it's like I was saying in certain courses, a D is not passing in college. In in some courses it is, but in most of the cases you have to have at least a C or better. So I failed it with a D, and I'm just like, damn. And I got away with it. And it kept saying like, if you want to graduate, because remember I only had a year left, you can um, you have to take these math courses, and I have about three math courses, two or three that I had to take to graduate. And, and mind you, English, reading and other science, all of that stuff, I passed with a B or an A. I passed with a B or an A. When it came to math, I either passed with a D or an F. And you can't pass with that. So I'm just like, oh, gosh, man, what am I going to do? i never forget when I was 19 and wintertime was coming up and I wasn't able to get, um, I wasn't able to get um, any more um, student loans. I remember stressing too, man. Like, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> and this was uh, seven years ago, man. Like, I was just like, dude, I remember when January 2012 came. I don't know. I was young. I was 19 years old, man. And it's like, dude, I, sh I, I was like, dude, I should be in school right now. <laughs> I remember just being at the crib, just bored as fuck, broke as fuck. I used to go to Pellissippi from time to time, but I remember when I went, it wasn't the same. Like, it just, it wasn't the same. Like, I remember when I met up with my boy Jeremy, we used to be friends, but we don't really talk that much, but I wish him the best. We was just, uh, it just, it just wasn't the same, dude. I remember him telling me that. I don't know. It just wasn't the same. Everybody dropped out, everybody moved out, or had babies, or working a job. And by now, in current day, August of 2018, it's almost September, half the people, believe it or not, actually still living in Knoxville. I still see some from time to time. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? They're like, man, you still live here? Like, yeah, I, th I thought you moved to New York. I'm like, oh, I did move to New York. I moved back. Everybody's like, New York this. Because a lot of people, uh, what's funny, a lot of people thought I was from the East Coast even back in 2011. And it was funny, when I did move to the East Coast, because I've been in the East Coast all through my life ever since I was a kid, um, people on the East Coast thought I was from the East Coast. There was only a couple people uh, that thought I was from down south, literally, because they thought because I was just too laid back. I was like, I'm, I'm originally from Tennessee. And I was like, yeah, because they was like, where are you from? You're not from here. And it was because the way I was talking, it was just because I was just so laid back. Like, I was laid back as fuck. And if you live in the South, everybody in the South is laid back. That's just, that's just how people are in the South. I don't care what part of the South you're in. If you're in Atlanta, if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Mississippi, I've been in pretty much all parts of the South. Everybody's laid back. It's just, that's just a Southern thing, I guess. I don't know. But I have like the best of both worlds. I'm, I'm, I'm a Southern charmer, you know, Northern charmer, whatever you want to call it, you know. But um, yeah, man, like 2012 was, that was a good year, man, but it was a bad year too. I didn't know a bus came over here. There's a bus, if you can see it, that big orange thing. When I was in school, we didn't have a bus. 
I mean, I didn't need a bus. I had my car, but I don't know. But yeah, 2012, man, like I remember I was just kind of drifting, man, to be honest with you. I was making, I was really into my rap. I took rap real seriously. I, I always took it seriously. Don't get me wrong, but I really wasn't hard into it. Like I was, I wasn't recording music because my, my studio equipment was still there, but my Pro Tools was not matching up with my, my laptop. So it was just, it was just acting funny. Like it kept, every time I loaded, it kept saying error. It was just, I remember restart my computer. It got my computer looked at, Pro Tool. It was, it just wasn't working, dude. I had to get new software. And eventually my laptop ended up getting stolen. But that's another, that was later on in 2012 that happened. So, but, um, yeah, man, just, I remember I, I met my ex at the time. Her name was Ashley. We was dating for a while. And then after so many months of, you know, just dating and sex and getting serious and fast forward to that, we ended up breaking up. And I'm going to court. She said I hit her and I didn't hit her. She was swinging at me. She was drunk. It was, it was just a mess, man. It was a mess. I don't have a record, thank God, because the judge thought it was a bunch of bullshit. And found I had a strain on me. It was crazy, dude. Like, but yeah, she still wanted to be. It's, it's a long story, man. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that story. But, and then like, I remember in 2013, yeah, because in 2012 I did. I was dating. I worked at Kroger's made beats but i didn't record anything just hanging out i was young i was 19 that whole year uh in 2013 i was 20. now i turned 20 in 2012 and then i was still 20 in 2013. um just living my life honestly man i was i was kind of drifting because i forgot to mention in 2012 i was also homeless for two months from august uh to october yeah that's about yeah two months I was homeless for, from August to uh, October, a good two months, two months of some change. And I remember when I got out of that, I was just real depressed. Cause everybody that I thought was cool with me, I didn't really fool with a lot of people, but the people I did fool with just abandoned me, man. And my folks, we, was, we wasn't we was talking. Like, that was one my time. My dad threatened me with a gun, but that's a whole nother situation. Mom was jealous of my ex-girlfriend. She said she wasn't, but she ended up admitting it later on. But I'm not mad over that, but it was our family was just broken up, man. It was crazy. And 2013, I just remember that whole year. I never forget it. Like every day that year, almost every day that year, I walked to the park, um, Victor Ash Park. That's my favorite park, but I love Victor Ash. The two the two places I love the most in Knoxville, Tennessee, if you know me, is Pellissippi State Community College, because the campus itself is like a nice little park, and Victor Ash Park. I love them two. I love them two split paces places. It was like my most calm, most serene places I go to. But I used to go to that park every day, just about, and just walk for hours, two to three to four hours at a time. And just think, every day I did that, I was skinny as fuck. Like I was depressed, dude. Just walking, dude. I didn't have a car, cause my car was, um, when I got arrested, it was taken, like they towed it away and I couldn't afford it. It was like six, seven hundred dollars, dude. So I couldn't afford that shit, you know, but it was just painful, dude. And then I had a dream with my grandfather that July. I'll never forget that. And he asked me if I was okay. And he was wearing all white, white suit. And I asked him, I was like, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to make a grandpa. And I was like, how's heaven? He's like, heaven is good. That's how he said it. And he told me to never give up. If I'm not, if I, if I can recollect, I remember he said he was proud of me. Just, but I remember, the, I remember the most, the most important thing he told me was to never give up on your dreams, and to just keep going in life. And he asked me if I was still rapping. I don't know why he asked me that. <laughs> well, actually, I do know why, because before he died, I remember he told me I was going to be famous. And he said, you are going to be famous one day. And he asked me if I was rapping. Like, his spirit asked me that. And I was like, I told him straight up. I was like, not really. I kind of just, I didn't say I gave up on it, but I kind of quit it for, you know, temporarily. He's like, don't quit that rap thing. You got to keep going, man. And then I remember we was talking, and then he just drifted away. And then, of course, and then that August, I was 21, I started just writing heavy, just on beats, just rapping like my ass off, and I didn't have no studio. Well, I had a studio, but I had to, I didn't have a laptop. I had no software to record on. And then age 22, which is 2014, I was 21, 22, I was writing even more albums. I met my ex-girlfriend, Courtney, that August. Well, we don't talk, she was a sneaky ass person, but 
That's all I'm gonna say about her. She lied. And then 2015, started making music again. And 2014, I was making beats again, productions. Met her with my ex, that was crazy, but that was early 2014. Um, my first ex. 2015, I, I made even more albums, wrote more music. That's when I transitioned and I moved moved to New York that August. Lived there for about five and a half months to six months, pretty much. And just enjoying my time there. Moved back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, late January of 2016, bought me a car, which I, I really wanted a used car. Well, it was a used car, but an older used car, but I ended up buying me a new car. It wasn't, it was 2012, but it was, it was over expensive, low price. It was having some issues, but I gave up a voluntary repossession or repossession as they say, and they took it. So my credit's fucked up, whatever, but money's fake anyway, so I don't give a fuck. I messed up my mom's credit because she co-signed, but I need to get my glasses tightened up, man. But it was just a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of bullshit, man. So fast forward to that, worked at Home Depot, that was six months because it was a, um, not probationary, um, seasonal position. They told me that I had to jump in February. Last day was in June, like June 1st, June 2nd. And then from that, I was just drifting, working dead end jobs at the temp service, trying to make my way 23, 24 at that age. Um, just trying to make it, man, making beats like crazy, just networking with people on Instagram like I've been doing. My iPhone 6S, I bought that back in February because my iPhone 4. Fell into the jacuzzi where I was at the gym. I was wiping my face and it was steamy and phone fell and I lost a lot of lyrics, so I had to redo a lot of songs, but it was cool. 2017, working, dead end jobs, just trying to make it. You know, networking with more people. Started recording music that October, still recording now, and making beats and networking. Took a trip to California, which was lit, lit. Forgot to mention in 2014, I was taking trips to Chicago, Iowa. Um, where else was I? Uh, Indianapolis, India, Indiana, excuse me. That was in 2014. 2017, I was in uh, California because I was supposed to meet up with somebody that was supposed to give me like an actual chance, meet up with some people, network, you know, for possibly talk about, you know, distribution, record label deal type shit, but she was gonna be in a fraud, like the person she is. Talking to her for months, called on the phone, texting. She was a fraud. Called on her bullshit and she never texted me back or called me back. I'm cool with that. Thank God for that. But uh, here it is, 20, 2018, August, still making beats, recording hella music, networking with people. I had a, um, I had a thing with Bentley Records, but it was, it's not a record deal. It's more of a distribution kind of deal in all honesty. So, and they wanted $300 uh, for me to, to sign with them. And I was like, usually when you sign a contract, you don't have to pay the record label or it's quasi where it's not a regular, it's a distribution center. And I mean, it, it had a good amount of length, mixing and mastering, but I felt like it just wasn't worth $300. Because I mean, I, heard, I seen people's, there was other people signed to it supposedly, but there was no successful stories. Like, I mean, I just, I didn't see anything from it. That's just me. So I didn't do anything with them. I said, basically, I'm cool. And yeah, man, I'm just, here I am in 2018. Um, right now at the moment I'm not working. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not. I quit my job. I was working in collections at a call center. It was. I only did it because my car got fucked up. That mar this March of um. 2018, some dumbass who was on her phone ran into my Kia. God damn, it was. It fucked my back up. It was terrible. The car was ruined. I mean, it was still drivable, but I wouldn't drive it legally. I'll probably get pulled over. Bought me a bullshit ass Mercury. That shit. I barely even touched my bat because she would slow down. Uh, she hit her brakes all of a sudden, barely tied the back. Her, her car had literally minimal damage, like barely even damage at all. My car, terrible damage. And it wasn't terrible, but it, it just wouldn't move. It was a piece of shit of car anyways. Fast forward, recently, literally just past Monday, because today is Friday, and Monday was the 20th of August. Today's the 24th, came from Walmart and some dumbass hit my parked car. It was a parked car. How do you hit a parked car? He ran my fucking bumper off. My bumper is fucked up, dude. My front bumper. So I had to get get his insurance information. 
get that taken care of. I'm gonna call the insurance people Monday, see what's going on with the status, what's going on with that. I need my car fixed. It still drives, but there's no bumper. And I just got my Honda, uh, not my Honda, my Honda, my Honda uh, August 6th. I remember that was a Monday, about three weeks ago now, two and a half weeks ago. So I'm just like, bro, let me get up out of here. But uh, even though I got $400 to my name, I literally got $400 to my name. Well, I got a little more than $400, but that's like gas money, stuff like that. So I got, I'm gonna just say roughly around $400 to my name. Um, I plan to get another job, you know, real soon. I've been applying to spots. Had a couple offers, but nothing really like, I had a home, work from home, I didn't really wanna do that. I mean, I don't know, I can still call them, ask, who knows. Then I had another job, they wanted me to stay for two to three years, and I had an interview it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, and I was just like, I'm not staying for two to three years in Knoxville, Tennessee. I've been here long enough, dude. I'm not. I'm from Knoxville, but I'm not from Knoxville. If that makes sense. I never, even as a kid, I never felt like I was from this city. I always felt like I was from New York. I don't know why. Because I was there every summer. I don't know. I'm not from here, though. I may have been physically born and lived here, but I'm not from here. I'm from New York, man. My soul, my spirit, I'm from New York. That's where I'm from, man. That's I tell people I'm from Tennessee and I'm from New York, you know, but I'm moving to Houston, Texas, man. I've been doing some research, honestly, for the past six months, in all honesty, seven months. I've been doing some research for a while about moving to Houston, Texas. I originally wanted to move to LA, but LA is too expensive. And when I, when I went to LA, I took a, I took a visit to LA in September. I didn't really get a good vibe. I, it was good, but it just, LA just wasn't really my spot, but because I was in a poor part of it, I don't know. But Houston is, is like a, a southern New York. That was loud. So I'm going to check out Houston. Definitely do that, man. Definitely. That was a loud ass bird. But um, this your boy, David DeAndre. I'm signing out. Join the rest of my dad, Pellissippi State Community College, man. on my day but um one thing about this school this school has always been good to me like the campuses all the different buildings and stuff I noticed when I went here we always had a lot of teachers help us out the best way we can with our studies because the teachers wanted you they wanted you to graduate they didn't want you to fail. And when I say that, I really mean that. Like, they really wanted you to graduate, man. They some good teachers, man. This is just a good school. I, I love Pellissippi, man. Now, my high school, I remember me and my mom talked about that. I talked about that a little bit on my song. <laughs> Beard in high school was some bullshit. That was a bullshit-ass school, man. I did not like Beard in high school one bit, man. That was, I went to a school full of, it was, and, and, and Tupac's words, like he said in this video, that was Ignoranceville. That was Doylesville, basically. Teachers were low-key, really just ignorant, just out of tune with life. Uh, had some racist teachers there. It was just, school wasn't for me, dude. Four years of that shit was terrible. So sophomore year. Sophomore year was pretty cool. I'll give it that. But just school in general, mm-mm. I couldn't do it. I didn't want to do it. I was happy to graduate. Here's a school right here. Old college campus. Look like they're doing construction. I never noticed that a library dog there. I don't know why. And this college campus had the best food too. We used to always be at the books. And the library was full of books, like good books to read. Good place to go. That's the library right there.
there's not that many people today. But if you see where that tree is, while those Cesar, we used to talk here and speak a lot of jewels and drop a lot of knowledge. <laughs> this was our spot. I used to pick up girls here and take pictures. We used to be lit right here. That tree right there next to that light pole, we used to be lit. So, but this is one of my favorite schools, man. If you haven't started college yet, make sure you go to Pellissippi State, man. You'll love the school. It's a great school, great place to be. You meet a lot of great people. It's always a pleasure going here. So, but I'm about to be up. Get up out of here. Peace and blessings.